Okay, Camilla has been out for basically almost a day at this point as of the moment I post this video and I'm sure that many of us has been able to test her out and I personally have been testing her out a lot for the previous day. So basically the whole goal of this video is to give my personal opinion and review specifically on Camilla so that I know that some of you out there who are still looking out for reviews after we get to test on the character can have an exact idea of how they actually perform. Now this is not going to be a video specifically on Camilla build because I'm pretty sure you guys have many other videos out there that you guys can watch on how to build her and it's more going to be about my specific Camilla build and how I'm experiencing with her after I got a lot of time testing her for the previous day. Okay guys Camilla banner is basically here and if you're planning to swipe for her then don't forget to check out loot bar. If you know me I've been recommending you guys loot bar before since you can always save almost a 20 percent on all of your top ups with over 11,000 orders and so many good review at this point in time you can be sure that loot bar is trustworthy to demonstrate to you i've been topping up my woolwa account through loot bar buying the highest woolwa package you go through the checkout process then they will ask you to fill your account information after completing you will have a direct message notifying that they are hopping in to top up for you then voila you're done here you can see my order receipt i've top up genshin impact with loot bar many times before so i can be sure that they are safe so guys be sure to check out loot bar through the link in my description as it can be a great way for you to save money especially if you are topping up a large amount in withering waves First off, let's talk about how she basically plays, right? Now, when you look into her kit, it's actually a very, very long essay, but in practice, it's actually not that hard. Basically, she's going to be a character that stays airborne 90 to 95% of the time within her rotations, which is really interesting because this is one of, if not the only character that I've used in a gacha game. Obviously, I haven't played gacha game that much. There are one or two characters like that in Genshin Impact, of course, but we are in Wither Wave right here. But obviously, it would kind of affect whether or not you're going to prefer her playstyle. Because being airborne is one thing, but also the mobility of while she is airborne is also going to be different. Because the dashing, while it still is the dash, but yeah, her moving around is definitely going to feel slightly different because she is swinging around in her vines. Which yeah, it looks really nice and I love it. But it's something that, well, of course, we have to point out because it's something that can affect the preference of whether or not you would like her gameplay. Now, her Nobra attack looks really cute. It looks good, right? It looks insane. I am very <laughs> surprised how much effort they put into her. As it, you know, her Nobra are basic attack of not using her skill but the whole point of her kit is when you use her e skill because that's when she goes into her what's called i'd say blossom mode and then she goes into her airborne state now within the state she's gonna do a lot of aoe attack overall a single attack of it doesn't seem to do high damage however she does these in very quick succession and whenever you hold down your basic attack she will keep doing her combo and then enter basically a Beyblade mode which is actually so insane and then she swing it's just so damn fast <laughs> that especially in AoE situation your jaws will actually drop of seeing how insane and how much effort Kuro actually put into making her animations right and then once her concerto energy is charged up another part of her E skill lights up which is called ephemerals after you use that she do a huge nuke dive bomb it actually deals a lot of damage guys it's one of the better part of a kit focusing on that which afterwards turns her into budding mode now within budding mode her animation isn't really much going to be different but the multiplier of her in budding mode is going to be enhanced significantly obviously i'm not going to be discussing much about the multiplier in this video because it's not a build video but she does a lot more damage than the blossoming mode before which of course is where you're going to be focusing the majority of your rotations in and then yes after uh, you know you use up all of her forte you end her e skill and then yep switch back to whatever your team building is to your R and party members to have them set up their support ability over again so basically that's how you play her there isn't really much to it as i've mentioned her skill description is very long but in practice it is not really that hard to understand 
find her. Now while we're here, I just might basically just show you what my specific Camellia build is right now. And I don't think it's really that hard either. I'm having her on, you know, her signature weapon. It is a pretty good weapon. However, it is not a requirement for you to have because the standard 5 star is also a very good weapon. From what I've seen in the math, I think it's only about, you know, 14 to 15 percent difference maybe sometimes becoming even less and her signature weapons becomes even much better whenever she goes into her button mode because her signature weapon have access to even more basic attack damage increase after you know she uses her console energy which is something that i can only think of Camellia making the most right now so there is going to be the difference there but you know considering it being a standard weapon and you can technically get it for free not to mention you got access to energy regen within its passive as well it's actually a very nice weapon that you can use on Camellia giving her a crit rate as well making her build a lot easier right obviously some other four star options you can use it as well but I mean if you're deciding to use Camellia anyway I just recommend you to try and get her five star standard weapon unless you're pretty much really early on in the game and you haven't really farmed for your account just yet then you can resort to a four star weapon but overall i really just recommend you to give her the five star treatment for echo's build i'm using the half ox set if i remember correctly you can still use the attack set the lingering tunes on her and you still do fine but overall half ox set is probably something that you should just go with four piece you can either go with dreamless or crownless they both are technically fine which is why you should just go with the echo that has a better substat for you making it you know decently easier for you to build your cost four obviously in this case it's most likely going to be crit damage but if you're feeling that you're missing a little bit too much crit rate then yeah you can go with a crit rate cost four cost three is going to be definitely both havoc i mean a mixture of havoc and attack is still fine but havoc is definitely recommended and the cost one is definitely going to be attack for a team building guys you know she's the character that uses a lot of basic attack therefore character that enhances your basic attack is going to be needed which is why sanhua is the character that mostly fit into her team and especially with sanhua also being a very much perfect character because of a kind of quick swapping place that right she's a character that charges her concerto energy basically the fastest in the whole of woodwind wave right now which makes it a lot easier for you to use her as a support character for camellia more than most of the other options that she's got right i mean you can obviously use danjin she's not that bad of an option right if, especially if you've got an s6 danjin as well then yeah overall you can still use danjin and she can still do fine and then for support healer obviously that goes to shorekeeper she's literally the best support character in the game right now and then after that is going to be verena mix and match between those two and you should do fine right overall that's the overall kit of how you play camellia how you build her and how you team building her right it's very simple it's not really hard to understand but here i would like to discuss a little bit into her pros and cons of what i found out when i play around with camellia right so within her upside obviously i'm using an overall invested camellia right now and in my account all of my five star character is pretty much invested most of them do have access to their signature weapon ss0 and i overall would say that camellia is a very very good character and easy character to play she's a very powerful character in that she is basically on par with all of the best dps character out there in the game obviously not on jinxi level i don't think any of the character is touching jinxi level just yet but overall her dps damage using in her right team you're still going to be able to clear the toa very much comfortably and her ease of gameplay is basically that of ji jan as well if you play ji jan i'm pretty sure you're aware he is the easiest character to play in the whole damn game however she's slightly harder to play because one thing i'm not sure if it's just my feeling is that she gets a little bit easier to be interrupted so i do experience knockback quite a bit and secondly whenever you're in her beyblade spinning mode right her mobility does go down quite a bit like it's that you you can't really move her around that much whenever she uses her spinning mode right you're more or less stuck in one place so if you're fighting against enemies that moves around a lot or you know attack her a lot then you still potentially have to either dodge cancel and end her spinning mode a bit early 
or you still going to have to end it so that you can chase your enemy so that you can go into her spinning mode again it's not like she's going to be in her spinning mode very easily to move around you can uh, you know <laughs> move her as if she's a beyblade on the battlefield that easily however she's more comfortable to play around with her because she doesn't require her elemental burst to go into basically her full power attacking gameplay because she uses her basic attack a lot unlike character like Hiyan where he is required to be in his liberation that he maximize his power damage output so if you're looking for damage power and ease of gameplay you're definitely not going to be disappointed there and you're even further not going to be disappointed if you're in love with her animations right because holy crap that says it feels so damn good to play her i am honestly scared terrified if i'm the person on the other side battling camellia because holy cow do i feel sorry for her enemies as she go into her budding blossoming mode she just smacked her enemies so damn hard that i just honestly feel sorry for them and whenever she uses her ephemeral dive bomb or you know her liberation the animation looks so good and she deals just so insane nuke damage deleting your enemies that yeah again you honestly would have to be terrified when actually fighting camellia on the other side which is why you know if you watch camellia resonator showcase we honestly feel sorry for you know the enemy npc that's getting beat up by camellia at this point right so overall with everything how do i feel camellia and you know should you guys pull for camellia at this point in time now for me personally it's definitely going to be a yes for me because i'm just in love with her playstyle our preference right it's something of very fitting for me because i really did enjoy camilla as a character animation is just so damn cool that i just can't skip her so overall if you're someone who really is into her gameplay then yes she's definitely not going to be disappointed you however as i've mentioned before if you're not the type of person who is enjoying you know airborne mobility playstyle character then you're probably not going to be enjoying her that much and moreover if you're looking for a dps character that you know it's insanely different from some of the other dps character damage output that we've already got in the game right now then actually guys she does not offer you that much of a difference you know characters such as yan xiang li xiang li yao right those kind of dps characters are just very very good at this point already so if you're looking for you know kind of min maxing your account looking for a little bit more into the meta or more of a powerful dps character to play around to help you with content then no she's not going to be that much of a difference and she's just basically going to be pretty much on par which is well not a bad thing because yes she is very damn powerful and easy to play but if you're looking for a character that's you know on jinxi level we're not having any character that is on jinxi level just yet and you're still going to be having to wait for more in the future so overall guys that's going to be my saying on camellia as i've experienced her you know for the previous day i hope that the video have been very helpful to you if you have any question feel free to leave it down in my comment section and i or some other lovely wizarding wave player will get to you there if you, you know you're trying to pull for camellia or any other character or you're saving up don't forget to check out loot bars i'm sure they will be very valuable to you i really appreciate you guys staying with me till this part of the video guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on my future video with that i wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video